Hello everybody, Nancy Alfaro here with Whip of Wisdom Ministries this is Atlanta, from Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, today I bring a message called The Joy to Serve. And this past weekend we just came back from a motocross event where we served the community uh, of motocross uh, this, this past weekend. And I, I gotta tell you guys what a great joy I have to know that God you know, is looking for people with an open heart, ready to serve, and he will do the rest. Uh, I had an incredible weekend ministering to the souls and, and just guys realizing it's not about you, it's not about me. It's about God moving through us to reach out to the people that he loved, to the people that he's searching and seeking to bring them to the feet of Jesus, right? To bring them to the cross, to bring them to repentance so they can reach salvation. So beloved, I wanna talk to you about the joy that it is to serve and how we can serve and what the Bible is telling us about serving. And let me tell you that you can decide if you wanna be an spectator and coming from a race, I have a picture here you see on the left side you see the riders riding motocross and on the right side, you see, you know, the fence and there's people watching. And, you know, I believe that in the kingdom of Christ, this picture, it's a good analogy to represent what may be happening in the body of Christ. In the body of Christ, you have some that are just watching and others that are actively participating. Now, I got to be fair because for the longest time, I was one of those just watching. And sometimes that happened because either, one, you feel that you are not ready to serve. Two, you have a very busy life and you're saying, I don't know when I'm going to do it. Or three, just because you feel like that's for the pastor, that's from the leaders of the church. I don't feel I have anything to offer and therefore just stay as an spectator. But let me tell you that the best way to love God is by serving others. And you have to do it being led by God. This is not something that you do on your own strength. You gotta do it led by God. Ephesians 4, 11 in, uh, in verse 12 says this, now these are gifts Christ gave to the church. So, church, do you believe in Christ? These are gifts given to all of us. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors, and the teachers, the, the five ministries, right? And it says their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and build up the church, the body of Christ. So today I'm coming to you as a teacher and my job is to make sure I'm equipping you, right, to do the work that we need to do out there for the souls. We need to be active. We need to participate, right, in this job that we got to do for the kingdom of heaven. Jesus started with the 12 disciples and from there expanded to multitudes. Today, you are hearing this message and is to teach you, to equip you on how to do it so we can do the job. But not anyone in the body of Christ is absent from serving. Now understand that they are gifts, and that's the key. These are gifts given to you because it's not something that comes from you. You are just the vessel, but it is God that will do everything through you. And that's important to understand so you don't take any glory on the work that you're doing for the kingdom. It is not because of your ability. It is because God has given you the gift to be able to serve others. Now, what are the qualifications to serve? There is a verse, Philippians 2, 3 to 8. Let's read it. It says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. So I want you to think like I'm reading a resume for a server. What is it that we need and not to do, right? Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. 
be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself, right? Don't think that you are the last Coke, you know, like the, uh, in, in Venezuela, we say something that you are the last Coke in the middle of the desert, you know, uh, like saying, I am all that in a bag of chips. <laughs> so don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You cannot be just looking me, me, me. No, serving means you're opening your arms to go out to serve other people. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. And beloved, this is one that we need to do a self-check all the time. You cannot let pride get in the way. You cannot think like, oh, look how good I do it. Look how good I'm talking. Let me tell you, God will pull your ears. That's not what we do when we serve. We need to have the same attitude attitude that Christ Jesus had very important number six uh, um, verse six it says through though he was God he did not think of equally equality with God as something to cling to this is talking about Jesus Jesus was God but he didn't come to this earth to say I am God therefore you know I'm allowed to do this and this and that he never show that ever so it says instead he gave up his divine privileges he took the humble position of a slave and was born as human being when he appeared in human form he humbled himself in obedience to god and died at criminal's death on a cross so part of serving is to humble ourselves to god is never a position of leadership, a position to say, I am more than you, or I'm gonna do this this way or that way. It's not about titles. It's not about, I'm a deacon, I am a pastor, I am a worship leader. It's not about the name or the titles. It is about having a humble heart that reflects Jesus. And that's very, very key uh, on how we need to conduct ourselves when we're serving. Hebrews 1.3 says this, uh, the sun radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. So what he's saying in here is that Jesus was radiating God's own glory. We should be radiating Jesus. We should be radiating, have expressing the very character of God. That is our job to do because he lives in us. Then we should be flowing from the God that is inside of us, he is the one that flows through us. So it, it shouldn't be me getting in the way. You got to allow God to do it. And this is a problem that we see. And sometimes it's a cancer in the church, unfortunately, where people start with the best intentions. I'm going to be led by go by God. But the minute they start seeing fame or the minute they start seeing, oh my gosh, look how many people are looking at me. The flesh gets in the way and now you are no longer showing the character of Jesus and you're going after your own desires. And, and you know, God, Jesus warned us, warned us about this at the end of times, that many were going to start selling, you know, Christianity, selling like, you know, in, in, in negotiating, you know, with, with the word of God. Um, and, you know, it is all about the show and and how many lights and how big, you know, uh, you, we can get in the churches and we gotta be careful. We can use all the tools that we have to attract people to the cross, but we gotta be careful. We are not doing it out of the flesh just to show the best show that, that, that I can set up. We gotta be careful with that. Now, what not to do, we see it on Philippians 1, 15, 17, it says, it is true that some are preaching out of jealousy and rivality, but others preach about Christ with pure motive. 
They preach because they love me, for they know I have been appoint, appointed to defend the good news. Those others do not have pure motive as they preach about Christ. They preach with selfish ambition, not sincerely intending to make my chains more painful to me. Wow, that's 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 sad. But it's happening, beloved, and we God have mercy that we never fall into preaching or doing anything by being selfish we have to have our heart in check guys we have to make sure that the motives of our heart is pure and pray and ask God God please help me to stay pure not to allow my heart to get contaminated with the flesh into the things of the flesh to never be out there just seeking people's approvals I remember when I started up, I started seeing like how many people came and how many people do we have and how many, do, and God actually, you know, uh, pulled me and say, why are you doing that? Who cares how many people are sitting there? That's not what matters. You can pray, for, you can, you can teach one or you can teach thousands. It doesn't matter the number. What matters is that the word is being released. And since then, I say, that's it. I'm not keeping a book anymore. I am not going to keep a record of how many people were in whatever event. Because it was not about how many, right? It was more about the Word of God is getting out there. And I always say, God, allow me to sow the seed. But remember, the one that does the growing is God. He is the one that is going to bring the harvest, not me. So we got to be careful, guys, that we don't get caught up right into, you know, into that. Uh, unfortunately, many times, you know, a church is being seen as successful based on how many people they have on the roster. You know, like how many members you have. And that's really not the most important thing. It is good that we are reaching out masses. And, you know, I get excited when I see you know lots of people going to a place where you go through a church and you see the parking lot completely full but you know at the church i know they made it i'm more concerned about how many souls are outside that they have never made it to the church and both are equally important i'm not talking about you know run about the church and and run about you know um the body of christ i think we all have our place in the body of christ and uh, some, you know, pastors, preachers are there because they need to equip, right? We are teachers. We need to equip the body of Christ. But there is also the evangelists that are going out to search the souls, you know, and, and, uh, and, and to set up churches. And so, again, the five ministries, right? Everybody serves in a different dimension, in a different, but we all need to serve. So, anyway... Who do we serve and how do we serve? There's a few scriptures I'm going to read here. John 13, 35 says, Your love for one another will prove the world that you are my disciples. So, you know, when we love people, we are proving that we are followers of Jesus, that we are serving him. And that's important, beloved, because, you know, in the, in the um, I have been speaking in this before, that in the body of Christ, we got to be careful that we are not dividing. We need to be loving, you know, one another. Uh, and, and on that love, that means we respect other people. We don't allow our ears or, you know, loan our ears to people to start talking or gossiping or things like that. So you got to love people. Now, serving comes with a price, okay? I'm telling you, uh, I was looking just this weekend uh, and this is why I was saying before, you know, I, we started recording, I cannot do this without, you know, my husband by my side because it takes a village to load the RV, to bring the canopy, to bring the tables, to bring the t-shirts, the hoodies, the Bibles, the stickers, um, to prepare the message, to have the sun ready, the radio, everything that we need to take with us, you know, extension cords, everything needed to be ready, you know, the display signs, the the you know the yard signs that we put throughout the track 
by the time we're done and every day we got to pick it up put it all back because if it rains or whatever we need to bring down the canopy and then we do it again early morning and that's all day long right and you are walking here and there you know now think about people i think often about the missions in venezuela when they go out and they feed 600 children you know think about that the work that it goes when they are making the soups cutting all the vegetables going to the market getting all the stuff setting up the you know making sure you have enough utensils to serve everybody the organization that you need to do to get all the masses people together you know uh there was another ministry at the track they were doing cut cotton candy free cotton candy for all the kids and what they did is they say kids come in and they will give them a word of god and then they gave cotton cotton candy and i was thinking about you know that also takes work you know putting everything together making sure you have everything you have um and maybe you are serving in a different capacity but you got to understand all these things may be maybe looking as a sacrifice but at the end of the day guys the joy and the reward to know and to feel that you have done what God called you to do that's the best ever that is, that makes worth every you know three nights that I couldn't sleep because God would wake me up and I'd be praying and asking God for guidance you know it, it that is just it's just all okay i i am energized in a different way through the power of the holy spirit even though the body feels achy because i walk i don't know how many miles back and forth uh you know physically i'm exhausted but spiritually i am re-energized so i just want to say that because serving comes with getting tired and we'll talk at the end a little bit about about that because i want to bring a, a point that i need to make clear first peter let me continue on first peter 4 10 11 says god has given each of you a gift we talked about a gift before from his great variety of spiritual gifts now these are these are we saw the five minister ministries but now these are gifts that he have given give to each one of us it says use them well to serve one another so understand the gifts that you have it's not for yourself because you're pretty although you are but he have given it to you for the service or for other people so it says do you have a gift of speaking then speak as though god himself were speaking through you so if i'm gonna t t teach something to you i gotta speak with the authority that god has given me allowing god to speak through me right do you have the gift of helping others do it with all the strength and energy that god supplies here i tell you that energy god i can speak about that yes god will give you the energy to get get it done then everything you do will bring glory to god through jesus christ all glory and power to him forever and ever amen and that's how, how it works so if you have a gift now i want you to think about like what are you good at what are the things that you know is a gift are you good singing have you thought about maybe going to a nursing home and singing for god there bringing some joy to some of these you know old people maybe hospice people that are ready just to cross over um maybe you have a gift that you're good with your hands maybe there there's something you know my mother-in-law was great making baking cakes and she would love to bring cakes to the hospital, to the fire department, just to give it out to people. And she would make the most beautiful cakes if it was somebody's birthday. You know, she wanted to, to be as beautiful as possible. That was her gift. And she wanted to give it out and give, give it all to God. She will actually tell me many times, I put Christian music and I like doing it in the middle of the night when everybody's asleep i storm and she was very good with fondant so she will make all these figures beautiful flowers and she will say god will always give her the creative the creativity to do that so anyway those are just examples on how you can serve Col colossians uh 3 23 to 24 it says work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the lord rather than for people remember that the lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you are serving is christ 
So even though you're working, you know, serving people, you you are doing it for God, not so much for the people. And why why I think this is important? Listen, sometimes people are rude, you know, and you gotta remember not to be rude back. Okay, sometimes uh, and remember the field that you're going in. You're gonna go to, and, and you're seeking those that are sick, those that need Jesus. So that's why I say you have to have your heart in check so you don't allow your flesh to get in the way and instead of being a blessing for somebody you end up having an argument with somebody okay so make sure that you are always flowing through jesus and what a great example was jesus himself uh, we see that on john 13 12 and 15 remember when jesus was washing the feet of the disciples it says after washing their feet he put on his robe again and sat down and asked do you understand what i was doing so he's telling the disciples do you understand what i just did and he said you call me teacher and lord and you are right because that's who i am that's what i am and since i your lord and teacher have washed your feet you owe to watch each other feet I have given you an example to follow, do as I have done to you. So what was Jesus saying? Yes, I'm your teacher and I'm your Lord, but I gotta be willing to serve. And if you don't learn how to serve, you say, I'm teaching you how to serve so you can serve over there. And if that means watching feet, I can only imagine like those feet were not clean feet, beloved. You know, they were dusty feet, feet that were in the desert walking, you know, they were probably stinky feet. And you'll be like, ew! But Jesus did that. Jesus didn't say, oh, I'm not going to wash this one because it's too stinky. He didn't do that. He did it out of love. So if he was able to take that humble position, we should be able to take that position. Telling you too that to serve, there is no little work or little job and big job or one that is more significant than another. You got to be able to do it all. You know, sometimes serving means cleaning the bathrooms at the church and cleaning up somebody else's mess. And that is okay. That's part of serving. So just to close up, uh, Matthew, let's see. Mark 10, 45, it says, For even the Son of Man cannot be served, but came not to be served but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many jesus came to serve therefore we have to serve amen uh, matthew 25 35 and 40 it says for i was hungry and you fed me i was thirsty and you gave me a drink i was a stranger and you invited me into your home i was naked and you gave me clothing i was sick and you cared for me it says, I was in prison and you visit me. Then this righteous man will reply, Lord, when we did ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink or a stranger and show hospitality or naked and give you clothing, when did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of of the least of these my brothers and sisters you were doing it to me so beloved understand something and you see me we do activities for the kids in venezuela you know we go and feed we go and do these things and we are serving god when we're doing those things you know maybe you have extra clothing in your closet and you go give it away to somebody that is in need extra furniture stuff that you don't need but somebody else may be needed Maybe you go to the prison and there you go and sing and give somebody a word of encouragement. Or you go, you know, and open your door to somebody that may be in need. Beloved, these are all ways on how we can serve. And Jesus was just saying, I want you to know this. When you are doing these things, you're doing it to me. So never forget who is the one that you're serving. This is why I say, beloved, why it's so, so important to always have your heart aligned with God. You can never serve from your own benefit. You don't serve well if you are tired and just doing it out of a routine. Beloved, if you are exhausted and believe, believe me when I say, when you are ministering, you are going to give everything you have. 
every and you are gonna be exhausted naturally because you are giving it all out but you need to make sure you are connecting to the source this is why it's important that you recover and you have that time to be with the Lord because it's like a fuel tank, right? It will empty, but you need to fill it by being connected to the source. You need to connect to God himself so you can flow and really cause an impact in the kingdom of heaven. Do not allow distractions to deter you from your call. You need to be ready to respond so I invite you today to put on your boots and go out and serve that there is a lot of work to do. Well, beloved, if you have um, heard this message or you want to hear it again, we're going to put it in YouTube and we have a channel called Whip of Wisdom 30 Minutes with God. You will find each one of our teachings there. Go out there, check it out. We have messages in English and Spanish. We are also in Facebook and Instagram under Whip of Wisdom. Go share, share, share this message with others. Thank you for being with us tonight. God bless you, and we will see you next week.